this is Honors Algebra 2 Pre-Calc. We're doing uh, what is hopefully the last video in 1.8 of Algebra 2, which is solving absolute value inequalities. So uh, this is just like solving the absolute value equations, except for two things. Number one, when you do the negative case on the absolute value, so you solve all the way down to the absolute value, and when you get to the negative case, you need to flip the direction of the inequality sign, okay? Uh, number two, the answer of these absolute value inequalities is automatically a compound inequality, and you're either going to need to know just from looking at it to use the word or, or use the word and. But to make that decision, you have to wait until you solve down to the absolute value. Uh, so, so what's worth noting here is that um, these are both after you solve down to the absolute value. Okay, you have to get down to that box before you can make these decisions. Uh, and I'm going to, so uh, in terms of remembering the words and and or, and which one's which, uh, I have two ways to do it. I have the way that I always remembered it and the way that it makes sense in my head, and then I have a probably way better way that a kid introduced uh, a year or two ago that seems to make a lot more sense to people, which is awesome. So I'm going to explain the way that the kid told me worked for uh, for her, and then I'm going to explain the way that works in my brain, and hopefully one of those two ways works for you, and if it doesn't, hopefully you come up with another way to logic it out in your head so that you know which one's which. Okay, so in example six, I'm going to solve... Uh, 2 times the absolute value of the quantity x plus 1, all minus a 1, is greater than 5. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start by solving down to the absolute value, because we can't do any of this other stuff until we've gotten down to the absolute value. So I'm going to start by adding the 1 to both sides, right? So I'm going to get 2 absolute value of x plus 1 uh, is greater than 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, because I'm doing sad maps. So I'm going to get the absolute value of x plus 1, sorry, I made that an awkwardly tall 1, is greater than 3. Okay, so at this point I'm stuck, and at this point I'm going to be able to tell whether this is an and or an or. So the way that my student uh, figured out that worked for her and several other kids was absolute value is great or. Like, I realize that the actual word greater has an er at the end, right, greater, but, um, but she said, hey, let's call it great or. So if after you've solved down to the absolute value, you have a great or, right, greater or less than, or sorry, greater or greater than or equal to, but great or, right, instead of less than, um, then it's an or. So because this is greater, that's an or, right? And so what's going to happen is when I write my positive and negative case, I'm going to write the word or between them. Uh, if it were less than, then it's an and. Now, uh, I'll talk to you separately about how I managed to quantify it in my brain, uh, but again, uh, great or is the way that, that she suggested it, and I think that's really clever and probably way smarter than whatever I was doing. All right, so my positive case is that x plus 1 is greater than 3. Or, right, because I already established it's a great or, so that's the case that I'm looking at. My negative case is that's this other rule right here. I need to flip the direction of the inequality sign. So x plus 1 is less than a negative 3, and now I'm just going to solve both pieces. So I'm going to solve by subtracting the 1 over, and I'm going to get x is greater than 2, or x is less than a negative 4. So my answer is x is greater than 2 or x is less than a negative 4. So that's my answer as an inequality notation. If I put that on a number line, because we're going to do the same steps that we did when we solved inequalities before, if I put this on a number line, what this is going to look like, here's my negative 4, here's my 2. This is saying numbers from negative 4 and down right? And this is saying numbers from 2 and up, and because it's the word or, I don't need to worry about overlap, so that's my answer on a number line. And if I were writing my answer parenthetically, it would be negative infinity to negative 4, parentheses, because it's not an equal to, and from 2 to infinity, right? And I use that u for union in the middle, okay? All right, so if you want to try P6 by yourself, you can. You can go ahead and pause me. I'm going to inch this over a little because I was uh, had some minor screen limitations, so you couldn't see all the P6. I'm going to go ahead and walk through it, but again, if you don't want me to, you pause me. All right, so I'm going to solve down to the absolute value by subtracting the 3 from both sides. So I'm going to get 4 times the absolute value of this x minus 2 quantity is greater than an 8. I'm going to divide everybody by 4. So I'm going to get the absolute value of x minus 2 uh, is greater than a 2. And now at this moment, I'm stuck, and I know because it says greater that I'm in an or situation. So my positive case is x minus 2 is greater than 2, or my x minus 2 is less than negative 2. Notice I flipped the direction of the inequality sign, right? Uh, so in this situation, I get that x is greater than 4, or when I add that 2 over, I get that x is less than 0. So that's my answer as an inequality. If I put this on a number line, here's my 0 and my 4. 
these look like this and because they're or it's okay that they don't have any overlap right and if I were to write this parenthetically it would be negative infinity to zero with a parenthesis and then a u for union uh, from four to infinity right and that would be my parenthetical answer okay so same concept now uh, we're gonna walk through uh, a couple of other examples but that's the basic gist of how this works okay um, so uh, again absolute value is uh, greater you can think about it as great or and I'll, I'll walk you through my other option in a sec it's the same thing it's just a, a stupid way of memorizing it okay so uh, let's go ahead and do an example seven Got a little bit trickier uh, let's do negative 2x plus 4 hmm, minus 3 hmm. let's do greater than or equal to hmm I'm gonna make it P7 that's similar. Let's do um, let's do three two uh, x minus. No, I don't want the two x. That makes it annoying. Let's do x minus two um, minus five is less than hmm thirteen. Sure. Yeah, I'm okay with it. All right, cool. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through E7. So uh, remember, I can't do any of this other stuff till I solve down the absolute value. I can't worry about whether this is greater than or less than. It doesn't matter because that's not until I get down to the absolute value. So let's go ahead and solve first. I'm going to add the 3. So I get negative 2 times this absolute value is greater than or equal to negative 8. Now, when I divide everybody by, sorry, it's a negative 2. When I divide everybody by negative 2, notice that I divide by a negative. I need to flip the direction of that inequality sign. So I'm going to get x plus 4 inside that absolute value is less than or equal to a positive 4. Now, at this moment, now I can worry about things like is this less than or greater than. So see how this says less than, right? Remember, it's great or, which means this must be and. So my positive case is going to be x plus 4 is less than or equal to 4. and my negative case is going to be x plus 4, and remember, I flip the direction of the sign in the negative case, is greater than or equal to negative 4. So when I solve this, I'm going to get x is less than or equal to 0, and when I move this over, I'm going to get x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So I need, uh, that's one way to write my answer. Because it's an and, I can also probably write it as a compound, uh, sort of as that chain inequality, right? Um, sorry, this is a compound with and, but I can write it as, as like a chain. So if we picture what this looks like on a number line, the trick is that this is actually not going to just be as simple as graphing the two pieces, right? This one would look like a solid dot here and shade up. This one would look like a solid dot at zero and shade down. So my answer is actually going to be from eight to zero and then shade the middle, right? Which means that my parenthetical answer is going to be bracket at negative eight up to zero with a bracket. And if you wanted to write this as sort of a chain, instead of listing it as an and, you could say negative eight is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to zero, right? That would be another way to write this expression, okay? So if you wanna try P7 without me, you can pause me. I'm gonna go ahead and do P7. All right, so uh, I'll add the five over. So I'm gonna get three times the absolute value of the x minus two is less than uh, an 18. And then I'm gonna divide by three and get the absolute value of x minus two is less than uh, a six, right? So now I'm stuck. I see that it's less than, so it's an and because great or, right? Uh, the positive case, sorry, this was the negative case over here. The positive case is x minus 2 is less than 6. And my negative case is that x minus 2 is greater than a negative 6, right? I flip the sign uh, when I do the negative case. So I'm going to get that x is less than an 8 and that x is greater than uh, a negative 4, right? Uh, so that's one way to write this answer. When I graph the answer, it's going to be, notice that this would be an open circle at negative 4 and go up. This would be an open circle at 8 and go down. Since I want an and, it's going to be an open circle at 4 and an open circle at 8 and shade the middle. If I wrote this parenthetically, it would be parentheses negative 4 
up to 8 because that's my starting x to my ending x. The parentheses are because it's not included. If I wanted to write it in this chain idea because it's an and, I could write this as negative 4 is less than x is less than 8. That's another way to write this same statement, okay? All right, so that's my P7. All right, let's do, um, so uh, I just want to walk you through. So there's a couple different ways uh, to, to think about this logic. Uh, I'll walk you through my way very last after we do one or two more uh, sort of trick examples, okay? Uh, so let me erase and get us some space. All right, so uh, let's do a couple quick examples. Let's do, uh, we're going to do an example eight uh, that's a bit of a trick. And we're going to do, uh, we'll do a P8 that is also a bit of a trick. All right, cool. All right, so... Uh, let's do, um, negative three times the value of x minus one. Uh, let's do minus, uh, 10 is greater than two. And then let's do, uh, 2 absolute value of x plus 3 uh, minus a 5 is greater than or equal to mm, negative 9. Okay, cool. So both of these are trick questions in one way or another. Sorry, I didn't mean to so you couldn't see part of that. Okay, so let's walk through uh, E8, which is a trick, and then I'll see if you want to try and walk through uh, the trick that is P8 as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this, right? I'm going to pretend I didn't know that it's a trick, even though I totally know it's a trick. Okay, so when I solve this, I get negative 3, x minus 1 is in the absolute value, and I get is greater than a 12, right? Because I add the 10 to both sides. Then I divide everybody by a negative 3, right? Uh, and when I do that, I'm going to have to flip the direction of the sign because I'm dividing by a negative. So I'm going to get x minus 1, uh, is less than a negative 4. So at this moment, I know that the answer is no solution. Now, you don't have to spot that the answer is no solution right away. You can work through the whole thing and you'll get that there's no solution in a second anyway. But here's how I was able to spot that. We've established that if I only have an absolute value on this side, that at the very smallest, it's zero. It's positive or zero. And we're saying that positive or zero is less than a negative number, and that's just not possible. That's not how negative numbers work, right? Positive numbers are bigger than negative numbers. Zero is bigger than negative numbers. That's literally just not going to work, right? Um, so once I know that that's true, there's no point in continuing to solve. So this is my answer. Now, if you make the mental leap like that, you got to show me something. You got to say, hey, here's how I knew it wasn't possible. Let's say you didn't make that mental leap because, again, you're not always going to make the mental leap. It's dope if you do, but you're not always going to do it. If I don't, so let's say I don't make the leap. So let's say if there's no mental leap, because a huge part of solving these things is sometimes making a mental leap. Well, then I would solve with my positive case. I would notice that this is less than, so I'd notice that I'm looking for an and. So my positive case is x minus 1 is, uh, is less than negative 4. And my negative case is that x minus 1 is greater than a regular 4, right? So when I solve, I get x is less than negative 3 and x is greater than 5. Well, if you put both of these on a number line, I'm looking for the overlap between being greater than 5 and less than negative 3. There's no overlap and it's supposed to be an and, right? There's no overlap. So there's no solution, right? So it, you, there's no big deal if you didn't spot it. Uh, if you don't spot the shortcut, if you don't spot that there's no solution here, it's fine. You solve it out, you still get no solution. Uh, P8 is also a trick. Uh, give it a try. Pause me if you don't want to see what the trick is, and I'm going to walk through it right now. So if I solve P8, I'd add the 5 to both sides. So I get 2 times the absolute value of this quantity x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then I divide both sides by 2. And I can get the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So at this moment, I know that the answer is all real numbers. Or if I want to say negative infinity to infinity, like however you want to say it, I know that it's, it's the entire line, right? The entire line is shaded. And, and I know that at this moment. And here's why. It's the same logical leap. This side is a positive or a zero. That's the, that's the output of, of any absolute value. And that has to be greater than or equal to a negative number. That's always true, right? So at this moment, I know that answer. Now, let's say you didn't spot that. Let's solve that one out. So I'm going to solve P8. Uh, P8. 
as though I didn't spot that shortcut, and that's totally fine, right? So if you didn't spot it, so so if, if you didn't make the leap, again, it's not a big deal if you don't make the leap on something, okay? So if I didn't make the leap, the positive case would be x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Because it says great or, I know that it's an or case, right? And the negative case would be x plus 3 is less than or equal to a regular 2. When I solve, I go ahead and subtract the 3 over, so I get x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or x is less than or equal to negative 1. Well, if you put both of these on a number line, remember, or means either of them is true. Well, the answer then would be that, that one, at least one of them is true at all times. It's the whole line. So it's the whole line, negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers, okay? Uh, so again, that's a bit of a trick question. So the last thing I want to talk about before we uh, end this last video of uh, 1.8 is in case that great or idea doesn't work for you, I'm going to give you the very stupid way that I've always visualized uh, this absolute value stuff, okay? So remember that when we first talked about absolute value in the very uh, first video of this section, we talked about how fundamentally it's like a distance, right? So, so remember that an absolute value is a way to measure a distance, right? It's specifically a distance from zero, right? So in my brain, when I see that an absolute value is greater than something, right? My brain says, oh, a distance has to be bigger than a number. That's like a restraining order. And I know this is ridiculous, but this is my brain does. My brain does like a little restraining order where my brain is like, oh, there's a little person here and you have to be at least five feet away from them or however many feet away it is from them, right? So, so, so the, y your answer is from here to here because you're far away from them, right? And if the absolute value of something is less than a number, my brain always says, oh, hey, that's house arrest, right? Because it says that that's distance uh, is less than a number, right? And so my brain's always like, oh, that's kind of like being stuck in your house, right? Like you're stuck, uh, you're stuck saying like, oh, hey, I'm here, right? Uh, and I can only walk like like 10 feet this way and 10 feet this way. So I'm stuck from here to here. So that's my and, right? So again, I, I did this for years and thought, oh, this is the way my brain thinks of it. And to be honest, this is still the way my brain thinks about it. Is it thinks about a poor little variable that's stuck with a restraining order, or a poor little variable that's stuck on house arrest. And I always thought, hey, that's a weird way that my brain quantifies it. And then a much smarter student said, oh wait, isn't it better to just be like, yo, this is great or, and, and that kid's super duper smart, great or, right? So, so if you see greater, it's great or, uh, and that then less than is and. So again, the kid's way is much smarter than mine, and, uh, but this is always the way my brain quantified it, is like picturing a poor little variable stuck in some sort of sticky legal situation. Uh, anyway, I don't know why, but, uh, so that is our 1.8, and you're going to go ahead and, and start reviewing for all the chapter one stuff, so good job.